Hi, welcome back everyone to the Carrie Wright Silk Coffee Break. Today we are back inside my studio, which feels pretty great actually. I thought I was going to feel funny taking down the lemonade stand from the dining room, but I'm okay with it. It's It's been good to get back to work here in my office and from now on, you're gonna see my whole mess. I wanna be able to show you things up close. And today I wanna show you the mobile that I'm working on. And there was no way for me to, to move the mobile around in order to get it up close to the camera. So I decided I would try to go hands-free. Sorry if the video's a little shaky today. Let me turn you around. I'll show you my mess and I'll show you my mobile. Okay, well, mess first. This, this is what happens uh, when I'm <laughs> trying to make a mobile. The entire workspace gets taken over with mobile making. So here it is. This is where we are so far. And this is still in its infancy. I just got the white panels put on uh, today. If you're following me on social media, then you saw some photographs uh, or one just one photograph but let me show you from underneath what this looks like because that's the photo that I posted for you and really that's sort of the most important view of all since this is wired to be an overhead light fixture and I've been very mindful with this uh, to try to keep a few just little open spaces like right in here so that once I finally do have the opportunity to turn this light on, you will see beams of light peeking through, but it's also going to turn these silk pieces translucent and they'll almost act like light filters, which is why I wanted to keep white here at the top. so that it will act like a film for the light, but it will still allow a lot of the light to show through. So what's going on on the inside here, you can see the, the light bulb on the inside there. And what I've done because obviously you're going to need to be able to change the light bulb for this to be functional. And what I've done is put a little, let me see if I can get close up. I've put a little loop right here in my wire and there's fishing line right here, but eventually that's going to be metal. This is, this is just a placeholder. Um, and I've made this piece this is the one piece up top here that is not attached with any kind of metal or fishing line. That is the only point of attachment right there so that that flips up and reveals the inside where you can get your paw in there to change a light bulb. So you see on the inside now that is an Edison light fixture. Let me put this back. I'm trying to give you a good shot. And then coming up here, I just want to show you, it's, it's attached to my, what I usually use to hold my phone. And here's the long wire coming down. So you see that's a, it's a light fixture. That's going to wire right into an overhead light. And what my plan is overall with this is eventually, because you can see some open spaces here, and that might be okay since this is for an overhead light, but it is going to hang down. So my plan is that I'm gonna work my way out from the top here. I'm gonna come out from the top and over the top to add some of these fun spirals and springs like this. There will be some really fun pieces coming out and then eventually what will happen is around the entire mobile, maybe I can stand in front of it here so that it's in the shot with me while I talk to you. 
so my idea is to um, come around here into this area of the mobile coming out so that it is a true mobile it's not just a light fixture that's hanging with some silk on it but i want pieces to actually be moving around the same way um, it so it's a true mobile um, the one thing i won't be able to do that i'm still sort of noodling on to figure out how to get a really good a good bit of movement out of it is to be able to have something that actually spins around the top so that it will traverse the entire circular motion around the mobile. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, um, but I will. <laughs> I'm still scheming. I'll figure out something really fun for that. Here, this is the first time I've used anything that uh, did not have a finished edge on it on a mobile, but I think down here at the bottom it'll be fine. Um, I started making these little tassels and I put them on um, keychains and I thought that I was going to sell these little three dollar keychains just as a fun little item at the marketplace but of course since I couldn't have the marketplace this year and it doesn't really make sense to put a bunch of three dollar items on the website just because of the amount of time and you know you have to pay for postage and all that. I used that kind of a concept to make this, well, I, I just kind of think of this as a little stamen here. I don't, I don't really want you to be able to see the light bulb or to see the, the wire that's going on on the inside. So all of the work that I do from here on out will be less functional and more beautification. So far I've tried to make the functional pieces of hiding the light fixture itself and creating enough of a space around that light bulb that it's not a fire hazard, <laughs> that all of the work so far has been trying to make functional pieces look beautiful. And now I feel like I can move on to the real fun, which is finishing it off with just a lot of beauty and whimsy. For those pieces, I have some really nice um, choices that I, that I can pull from, and I think this is where I'm headed, is to use some of the plaid from one of the silks that I made for this year's collection. And it's nice to be painting yardages, you guys, because I always end up with um, really nice extra pieces that I can use for all of my other work so that um, I already have some supplies on hand that I can immediately get my hands on and just start putting to use in other projects like my sleep masks and the cosmetic bags that I started making. But I think this color palette, and I'll show you, I think using some little tufts of things like this coming around as mobile elements traversing and turning and dangling in the breeze. That's kind of what I'm after. I want that little pop of color to come out from this very, very soft, gentle color that's going to be, this, this one I believe when it's lit will just be warm color. It, it won't be a discernible color. I think because of the color of the silk and the way that light goes through the silk and makes the silk very transparent, I think that that peach color really will just end up being warm light. That, that's how your eye will read it. So to have little pieces of color that are out away from the mobile moving, it'll, I hope, be a feast for the eyes. The reality is I won't know what this thing looks like until it is hanging up in my own house. Because it's wired, I don't have a way to see what it looks like lit. So each time I make a piece, I hold it up to the light. And right now, let me see if I can give you this view. I have it set up 
so that I can kind of see my overhead light through it. And that gives me an idea where, where for example, two layers are overlapping with those sort of petal pieces that I've attached. It gives me an idea of the dimensionality that's going to happen, and all of it is intentional. That's all on purpose. None of that is happenstance. I'm being really careful how I how I place the pieces, keeping in mind the little shapes that get made. Um, like right here, you're seeing some overlapping areas, and that's intentional. Those those darker notes that happen because of how the light shines through it. So it's just, it's a labor of love. <laughs> but just so you know, my goal for these Friday coffee breaks is either to do what I did today, which is to try to show you, this is what I'm working on in my studio. This is, this is what I'm playing around with, or to have a little tutorial session. So if you're a silk painter and you're watching these coffee break videos, either live or as they're recorded and placed on YouTube or Instagram, wherever you're watching from, if you're a maker and you have something specific that you want answered or you have a question, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know what it is. I'd be happy to, to try to sort of incorporate that question into my making process and show it to you on a Friday. And remember, there's always a reason to have hope.